Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm honestly just so tired of this and I'm going to detail that to you and what, what's kind of been bothering me and do a really beautiful kind of natural spring look with a matte shadow. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. All right, ladies, we're going to be talking about something that I just, I had a different title for this video and I just, I couldn't, I, I was like, honestly, I'm so tired of this. That's what I said. And I thought, you know what? That's the title of this video. So this was going to be about how to get rid of crow's feet. I keep running across just articles that it's about how to get rid of things and how to change things and how you need this and how you need that. And I just got really tired of it. If I can get this earring in, it'll be a miracle. So I wanted to do a makeup tutorial that was really natural. I'm wearing a new set. It's not a set. I bought it at Banana Republic. It's a top. It has actually a shoulder pad in it. I have this in a different color. It's like a dusty pink that I've worn before. It comes off the shoulder a little bit. And then this is a men's small and it's their cashmere uh, like crew neck sweater. So they had an oversized one that would match this for women's, but I was like, I don't want that. I don't really love oversized cashmere because it stretches anyway. So I got the men's small and I love it. So this is kind of like a springtime natural look. I air dried my hair. I don't know. It's never a good idea, but I just wasn't up for it last night. And I said, you know what? You do you. And I just got a cut. It's being tame. I'm, I'm surprised. So I washed my face just now with my La Mer foaming cleanser. I'm going to put on a little bit of the essence lotion or the treatment lotion. So about getting rid of crow's feet. I have talked to you about this before. I actually think they're beautiful. I know not everybody does, so we can talk about how to, you know, smooth out the eye area, the fine lines, etc. I will walk you through that. I just think that if I could come across some articles in all of these magazines that are for women, written by women, I would love to just have some encouragement about age and just aging and not having to get rid of everything and having to do a million procedures. I get it. I'm not saying that you can't do it. I'm, I'm thrilled. If you want to do it, I've said this. So I feel like I always have to have this caveat that if you want to do Botox and filler and facelifts and all this kind of stuff, amazing. I think it's great, but I'm getting exhausted by having to constantly see articles about how to get rid of everything that happens when you age. I just think it's weird. I don't, no one's like calling it out and saying anything about it. And everybody's just thinking that that's normal. It's not normal, ladies. It's not normal to have to try to eradicate everything off your face as you age. I just think that the, people need to be sounding the alarm. I'm gonna put on a little bit of my rose lip balm, just a little bit more. Oh, and also showing up with this, cause this is also a very normal thing to have happen. I don't consider it adult acne. I consider it hormonal and very large. And I don't know what happens. I did put tea tree oil on it. I am using an led mask that really helps with healing. This was not, it was very painful and I'm not thrilled about it, but I'm showing up because this is what a real skin does when you're aging. It's very unpredictable. Putting on some hydrating infused emulsion from La Mer. So there's a big thing over on TikTok. I know a lot of you aren't on TikTok. So I'm reporting to you right now about TikTok, about these young girls, teenagers in twenties doing all this Botox and doing all of the, these procedures and doctors are doing it to them. It, it, these early, early ages, it's just wrong. In my opinion, it's wrong. Anyway, we're all conditioned to that and saying, oh, it's okay. And then it's preventative. No, it's not. You need to, that's just crazy. I can't believe that we're in this world where these teenagers, these young girls are doing these procedures and injecting themselves with all these toxins. And it's like, you can't even naturally just have your face just develop. I'm going to do a little eye cream. It's funny. I didn't mention this eye cream to you in my skincare video. I think because it's, I did a clip before and I had mentioned it and I thought I did, but I'm using the eyeball intense from La Mer and I have this from in beauty project. It's really nice. It's a metal ball, but it's really big. And so I just dip this into my eye cream. And then I give this like little treatment to my eye area like this. It just feels so good. I did show it to you in one of my videos afterwards, but I just, in that video, I don't know what, I don't know why I missed it. So speaking of eye creams, you can use an eye cream with retinol in it for smoothing the fine lines and the crow's feet around here. I actually used one last year and it burned. I had like this big 
like burn, irritation on my eye area. The retinol was just too much for me. It was just like, wow, I can't believe that did that. So you can go for some alternatives um, other than retinol. You can do, there's an ingredient that is like nature's retinol called Bacachol. I think I did say it wrong, but that is something that's going to help with smoothing out the fine lines and wrinkles. It's gentler on the skin. You might want to look into that. Also not forgetting SPF. So today, I will put on a little bit of my La Mer SPF 50 for my face, but around my eye, I don't love taking my sunscreen and putting it around my eye area. So I have been using, which I've showed you over the years, the Super Goop has one that's called Bright Eyed, 100% Mineral Eye Cream SPF 40. It's done really well with my skin and around my eye area. So it has a little bit of tint to it. I'm going to just warm it up in my hands a little bit and then I'll take it around my orbital area here, especially on the sides. I do wear a very large brim hat that I showed you on Instagram when I walk the dogs. It covers my whole face, so I never get sun, even with, you know, of course I have my sunscreen on, but I don't have sun, like when I used to wear a ball cap, so that's actually a really good thing to think about now that we're going into spring, summer, to have a hat that covers your whole face. So in this article that I was reading in this magazine, it was really great, simple, you know, tips and what have you. And then it got to the last one and I'm going to tell you what it said. And then that's when I was like, honestly, come on. So in this article, it was actually really good advice. If you're looking to minimize having, you know, crow's feet or, you know, having this area not progress with more pigmentation or more fine lines and wrinkles, plumping it, hydrating it. Also, you can look for an eye cream that has caffeine in it, peptides, niacinamide. All of those things are going to help with this like very delicate eye area. And also the skin is very thin. That's why they say to not be too aggressive with your skin underneath your eye and pulling it. Sometimes I think I, when I watch myself on the camera, I'm a little aggressive, but sometimes I do see I'm pulling. You don't want to pull and tug on this eye area. But this last part, it was saying follow an effective treatment regimen. And I just, I got to be a little much. I think that you can really see great results with the doing great skincare, SPF, using a retinol or an alternative to that. But when it was saying here that she recommends, this cosmetic dermatologist recommends combining in-office Botox every three to six months with three sessions of activated platelet-rich plasma injections, also known as PRP, along with three sessions of the smoothing, clear, and brilliant laser treatment for best results. I was like, you lost me. <laughs> I like everything here. Also, we're talking about light therapy, LED light. I've been using my Dr. Dennis Gross a lot. It, I actually was using the wrong plug, so it died halfway through my 30-day experiment, but I was seeing great results with it. I was also seeing fast turnaround, so I started using it. They did help me troubleshoot with the right plug. This is healing much better with using the LED light on the blue light settings. So I really do like the Dr. Dennis Gross because there's three different settings that you can do with the different lights. And I'm working on that pigmentation with my LED light. So I liked all of this until I got to like this really intensive, like doing Botox and doing PRP and then doing Clear and Brilliant. I thought it was a lot. I think that's where women start kind of feeling like more is more right? When you have a doctor telling you that you should be doing all of these things, not to say that it's not right for everybody. I feel like it's very hard for me to, to be on here and trying to promote pro-aging and to accept aging and how you look. And then to be reading this thing and being like, I don't feel like it's very realistic for a lot of women to do so many treatments. I mean, when I saw Botox three to six months, it just lost me there. It's like, I don't want to be going in and doing a neurotoxin in my face every three to six months. I've been studying and researching and trying to find to make sure that I'm getting accurate information on. We've got to have studies on what it's doing to the body with you constantly putting in Botox. I did read an article, two different articles actually, that said that the max you should be using is two years. I never knew that. And then it was talking about muscle atrophy. Like you've basically been, you know, paralyzing this muscle and over time, you don't have the muscle anymore. And it's just very interesting to me. I, I don't know. Next article came on and says, you've got to get rid of your bunny lines. Okay. So we don't have crow's feet and then we have leather skin or lizard skin. We have leopard spots and now we have bunny lines. I was like, oh, please do tell me what the bunny lines are. Well, apparently bunny lines are when you, <laughs> when you squish your face, in your nose and you have these lines on the side of your nose. I have never noticed those, but now we need to eradicate those and do more Botox in our nose. So we don't have, we don't have these. I mean, almost like throw in the towel, <laughs> wave the white flag. I am done because we have 
bunny. We have 11s. We have crow's feet. I mean, and you know what's so funny, ladies? I don't see any men having 11s, having crow's feet. That's not a topic of conversation for them. <laughs> I mean, let's put this into perspective, shall we? I mean, okay, let's get back to what I was doing. I'm gonna be using Fiercely Smooth Face Primer and I'm gonna just smooth out my skin. I forgot to do the SPF 50, but don't worry, I'm not going outside, so we'll be safe. But please put on your SPF, as you all know that I do encourage. So now what we wanna do is, I'm going to do my eyelids, and I'm, you know what, no, I'm not gonna do that because I need to, I just have to use my no redness on here. Let's just paint it so I don't have to look at it. Let's keep it like that. Yes, it does look better for me. I like that. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Now we're gonna go into my eye primer. This is my first step that I do. It's going to prime my eyes, take away all of this discoloration. Now, this is a cream product. When I put a cream product on my eye, like this, go on the inner corner, lash line all the way up to the brow bone, okay? It's cream product. My eye moves, it opens and closes, it folds in the middle. Yes, you will see a little creasing until you put on your eyeshadow. So you will see that, but it's impossible to put on a cream product that's not supposed to dry out your eye. It's supposed to stay like this so it grabs onto that eyeshadow and then it lasts all day, it looks true, etc. So now I'm gonna do my left eye. All right, now my eyes are done. I'm going to just work this in just a little bit here. So you can see my color corrector does work. This is going to just take out that redness. It's going to not look like I have redness coming through if I put on my concealer only. So this is almost like a little scab right now, right? I can help with color. I can't help with texture because it is raised, but I can help with the color. So that's what I really want to concentrate on now today. I'm going to show you my little clamshell. This is my all over color for my lid. So I'm going to take this. And I'm going to just go across the lid just like this. Lash line up to the crease a little bit there and really get a nice, just kind of like a nice wash of color on the lid. I'm gonna take the lighter color to blend. It's actually very crumbly. I dropped it by accident, my poor little sample, but this is what it looks like. It's a nice, beautiful, just very light highlighter for your brow and it's matte. So let me just actually, you know what, I'm gonna take my eyeshadow blending brush. I just wanna give it a nice softness. I'm actually overlapping a little bit here. So it's just kind of fused out, nothing major. You know what I love? I love the fact that when I see my film on editing, that everything's not perfect, right? I am not that YouTuber. I don't know, maybe back in the early days, I was, no, I, could, I can say this for sure. I was very, particular, if everything wasn't perfect and it didn't look like up to YouTube, you know, like perfect, perfect, like can't show any flaws or imperfections. This is prior to 2014, 2015. I would redo it and I could redo it seven times, right? The whole entire video, I'd refilm it. Now it's almost like there's so much beauty in not having things perfect and not having them look just absolutely like that Pinterest matcha girl writing in her journal, working out, having that perfect life. It is not perfect. Makeup is messy. Makeup is interesting. Makeup is what you make it and you have fun doing it. I don't want to be that perfect person. I used to want to be that perfect person, but I don't want to be that perfect person. And when people say comments about, you know, certain things or my face up close or this and that, it's like, yeah, it's just called real. It's called real raw and we make it beautiful. It has to develop just like your aging. You have to develop and learn and go through, not around. You got to go through these experiences. So we're building, we're making things beautiful. It might not look perfect right away. Patience, like let's work through this. Okay. So we have on the two colors now. Now I'm going to go in with like a nice dark cocoa. The palette for all of you new ladies is called Strong Brew. And it was these coffee colors, but I thought, you know what? My women that are on my fierce aging and my customers are strong women, right? This is a beautiful natural palette. So we're going to call it strong brew. We brew whatever we're making in life, in the kitchen, in our careers, whatever. We make it strong. So that's where this really came from. Taking my short smudge brush, we're going to go to the base 
I want to give it this nice, beautiful shadowing coming in soft, soft. I'm going to take a eyeliner over this, but let's just bring it, just smudge it out here on the side. Now you have two different options here too. When you're just doing a really nice natural look, you can go to the base like this, just kind of wing it out a little bit, soft, soft. And then you can also give yourself a little dimension right here in that crease. And then you can, if you feel like, oh no, it's too much or what have you, just go back with your blending brush and just blend it out a little bit right there. And you get this really beautiful color. I'm going to add a little topper today to this look. Um, I think it'll be really pretty. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the left eye. I don't think they're the same exact over here has a little bit more, I think. And then we're going to just clean up with our all may pad. So I can whisk this out. See how this is a little bit lower. I need to clean that up. Just taking my all may pad, which is my little lifesaver here when it comes to just cleaning up. It's just, you can get them in waterproof or you can get them regular. This is regular. You can see all of that would be mixed in with my concealer. I don't need that. I don't want that. I don't want brown mixed in with my concealer here because I already have things that I need to <laughs> lighten up when it comes to pigmentation. So let's take our Just Peachy, which is my color corrector. It is going to have that pink peachy hue that's going to help lift this darkness right here, going right here, just over that area that you can see. And then I'm going to take my foundation buffing brush and let me just buff this out before I put my concealer on. I'm going to curl my lashes. You want those lashes really nice and open so they really open up the eye. You're really going to see those lashes. Even if you have little baby lashes, we do have a heated eyelash curler that will help with that. You don't want a mechanical. Lashes are up. Now, dark chocolate waterproof eyeliner. Perfect. It has the right amount of tip. Again, ladies, when you use my pencil sharpener, it is going to be a rounded tip. This will not go to a sharp point. Don't try to make it a sharp point. This formula is not made to do that. So that is a very important point to, to know when you're using my creamy eyeliners. They do not go to a point. They're not supposed to. So I'm going to just take this on the lash line coming up a little bit. Just at the end here, I'm going to bring it up, making sure that we have that just lifted. I already put that little nice smoky line with the eyeliner or the eyeshadow, so I don't need too much of this liner. I'm going to, just to balance out just a little bit, whatever's left on here, just underneath in these little corner. Now, this is the fun part. We're gonna take a little Chanel this is number 26 quartz rose. It's a, actually a liquid eyeshadow. And I'm going to just go to the middle of my eye. This is a matte palette, but if you want just a tiny bit of sheen, I'm going to just take it right here in the middle. Do you see that? Just like pulling in this whole thing. Wait until you see the lips that I'm going to do. This is going to be just really a little, little extra. It's going to lighten it up a little bit. And then it's going to change the color just a smidge. So it's not so matte and darker. So I think it looks pretty. I think it's something a little bit different. You're just adding in a little spice at the end there. So now I'm going to take my creamy concealer. This is in light and I'll just go over what I did. Not too much, as much as you want, as much as you need. Again, you make the rules. No one else does for you. Now I'm going to just roll over this very lightly. So I have some concealer there and we'll take my foundation buffing brush and we're just going to go right under the eye here, blurring it out nice and airbrushed. An important thing now too, is that you, that since I have this on my chin area here, you have to wash your brushes for sure, no matter what, after this makeup application. So that's why it's always nice to have two sets of brushes so you can have these washed and drying while you use your other ones. But this is really important because there's no way for me to apply this without using my brush. And I want to basically clean the brushes. So now that I've used this, I'm gonna use a different brush to do the foundation over my whole face. I jumped a little bit of head and I didn't do my volume up mascara. So we're going to 
go in to make these lashes really stand out. So this is a really important part, especially when you're doing more of a natural look that you want to get those lashes from the base all the way up to the tips and giving that like false lash look. So it really completes the look. Not a lot of eyeshadow, but you really want those lashes to stand out. This is the perfect example of hitting your nose with the mascara. If my whole face was completely done with the BB cream and what have you, I would have to take my All May pad, take it off, and then be like, oh no, like I have this whole, this is my concealer here because I went up there. But now I would have to redo my whole face because I would have to like overcompensate for what I took off. Don't worry, because that's why I can actually add in with my old brush here. I can add in just over it with that concealer, whatever was left, and then we go into the BB cream. But that is really <laughs> one of the reasons why I do not do my foundation before and I do my eyes and everything first. All right, so eyes are done. We're gonna go and do the best part, which is going to be the skin. Put a nice little kind of just like a veil of this BB cream over the skin using the new foundation buffing brush. And I'm going to just buff this into my skin. Okay, so BB cream's on. We're gonna use the clear brow mascara and we're going to just groom the brows. I'm going to be using one of my favorite lip liners called Rose All Day. It's going to match perfectly. This is almost like a pinky lavender color actually. I'm going to use Pretty Smart, which is going to be very complimentary. And then I'm gonna use my Chomps on top. So it's a really pretty combo. If you're looking for a nice soft lip that's pink, this is a really great combo. Now we're going to add the Pretty Smart. So this is just really very, very everyday, no brainer. And then a little, little Chomps, which is short for champagne. It's like that bubbly top on top. I like to just do it sometimes just in the center here, give you that freshness. Then for cheeks, you know what? We could do a little creme brulee. That's my hybrid bronzer. Just give just like some color right here, just right on that cheekbone, which is very soft. Bring it on the jawline if we want to, a little bit at the top. And then just to pop the cheeks and keep it all in this kind of color family, I can use St. Bart's. And this is going to be that really nice, just kind of soft pink. Put it on, it's a cream blush, and work it back right here, wherever you want to put it on or place it on your bone structure. Now you could do, since it's spring, summer, and the, you might be out more, or you might want a little resetting, refreshing SPF 40. This is a resetting mist. It's called Defense Refresh from Supergoop. I found it when I was looking for my um, SPF for my eye. So this you can just shake and then just spray your face and have that extra protection. Maybe you're out longer than you expected or what have you. You don't always have to keep applying over your makeup. You can use a resetting spray for SPF, which I love. This is a chemical sunscreen though, so just to be aware. So this is what we have. We'll take down the air dried hair, see where we, where we are. But it's a very beautiful, just matte shadow. If you want to add a little bit of that sheen to it by using a liquid eyeshadow or using another one of my eyeshadow palettes that you can add in. Cabana is a really great one that you could do on top of this. So you can mix and match if you want to. And just having a really pretty lip. This is very of a springtime, but natural look. My hair is, you know, not obviously polished and perfect, but you know what? I like it like that. I don't want to always have to have everything so perfect. It's doing what it wants to do. It was actually very healthy to let it air dry and not keep drying it. Yes, I need to put some oil on in these areas, but I'm okay with that. And I would love to see more articles that are pro aging and, and embracing women's aging and celebrating it and stop seeing the new words, always bunny lines and what's next, like tortoiseshell cracks or I mean I don't know I'm getting really over it and I'm, I'm like getting expired and that's why I keep showing up on my channel and encouraging you to love all your lines and your wrinkles it means you're living it means you're alive it means that you are able to experience everything that's going on in this world and, and get better and, and learn about yourself and embrace and grow and I mean all of the things so ladies I hope you enjoyed this 
little makeup tutorial. It's about feeling good, about doing something for yourself, just moving forward and celebrating that you're able to get through each day. So until my next video, I'll see you later.